questions remain unanswered as students return from tragic Algonquin trip. World leaders arrive in Germany for the G20 summit amid protests. Spider-Man traps visitors at Union Station. Humber News starts now. Hello, I'm Scott Hokanen, coming to you from our newsroom at Humber's North Campus. Thanks for joining us. Here's what's making news this hour. Details are emerging about the tragic drowning of 15-year-old Jeremiah Perry during a school trip to Algonquin Park. A classmate says he was with Jeremiah when he disappeared underwater in Big Trout Lake. We get more on the story from Humber News reporter Brandon Shogri, who was at C.W. Jeffries Collegiate this morning. 17-year-old Boran Balsi was on the trip too and returned to C.W. Jeffries just two days after his friend Jeremiah Perry drowned in Algonquin Park. Boran says that he and his classmates had all got in the water to wash up. He was wearing a life jacket at the time, but Jeremiah was not. But he didn't uh, wear a life jacket yesterday, no, two days ago. And uh, he went to a lake and we went too. We were in the group. Boran was beside Jeremiah when he disappeared underwater and says he felt something grab him. There's something pulled me down. And after uh, I felt before my left, uh, foot and after my right foot. It was taking me really strong, like it was pulling me really strong, really, really strong. And I had life jacket, but still it was really strong. And I went inside of the water and I can't talk because I was trying to get oxygen, but I was getting water. And he thinks that what pulled him under may have actually been Jeremiah. No. You were not, you what, were... what will pull him? Like, what pulled you? Like, what pulled you? Maybe Jeremiah. Because I felt uh, people. And sometimes, you know, friends can play with each other game. Like, you know, they're pulling each other and they're dropping. But it didn't me. It, it didn't leave me. Like, it's, I told uh, it was people. It was a people. And uh, they told me uh, it's uh, it's dark. And I told uh, let me let me look around. Okay, I I was looking around and there's no Jeremiah. Where's Jeremiah? And I told where's Jeremiah? And Miss told, yeah, where's Jeremiah? And after uh, they told the island, there's some people there too at, at, at the island. And they searched him in there. And after, uh, they couldn't find him. Toronto District School Board spokeswoman Sherry Schwartz Maltz says that they've sent up the last bus to Algonquin Park. So there's seven family members that are on the bus, plus there are two TDSB social workers on site. and. That's so if the kids need to talk, if they need to be together, if they need some sort of professional assistance, that it's there for them. She says under protocol, all kids would have to pass a swim test. But Jeremiah's father says neither of his sons can swim. Again, our complete focus has been on, you know, supporting the family through this tragedy. And let's not forget there is a horrible tragedy here and supporting our kids and making sure our kids come home safe. So the details, those particular details, I simply don't have. And we will look at everything once everybody's back and we can properly debrief. Swim tests are required under our safety protocol. Swim tests are required prior to an excursion such as this. I'm here at C.W. Jeffries where a bus has just left to pick up the remainder of the students from Algonquin Park where 15-year-old Jeremiah Perry drowned two days ago. There's still plenty of unanswered questions left as to the swim tests, their regulations, and whether the 15-year-old should have been on the trip in the first place. For Humber News, I'm Brandon Chogri. Fire investigators are in Toronto's West End today. Crews responded to a four-alarm fire near Trinity Bellwoods that began on Wednesday evening. At least five houses just south of Ossington and Dundas were seriously damaged. People were evacuated from nearby homes as the fire broke out around 5 p.m. Police say a number of people were treated for smoke inhalation, but there were no serious injuries. Hamburg, Germany is preparing for the start of the G20 summit tomorrow. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau arrived in the city with his family this morning. Security has been heightened with around 20,000 police officers securing the event. Riot police clashed with anti-G20 protesters earlier this week, clearing the streets with water cannons. More demonstrations continued today. Security forces are expecting around 8,000 violent protesters throughout the summit.
On the way to the G20, U.S. President Donald Trump stopped in Warsaw, Poland to deliver a speech. The American leader urged Russia to cease supporting hostile regimes. He also told the crowd that the West is stronger and needs to defend itself. This continent no longer confronts the specter of communism. But today we're in the West, and we have to say there are dire threats to our security and to our way of life. You see what's happening out there. They are threats. We will confront them. We will win. But they are threats. In Japan, massive flooding has killed two people and left almost 20 missing. The island of Kyushu was affected the most by heavy rains caused by a typhoon earlier this week. Authorities said one man was found dead after being covered by a mudslide. A 43-year-old man in a neighboring town was also found dead after being buried. Four people are still considered missing from the typhoon, while 15 remain unaccounted for. Japan's meteorological agency says the rainfall in these areas has been unprecedented. Toronto Public Health has confirmed the city's first positive mosquito test for West Nile virus. West Nile is a potentially serious illness that can occur when a person is bitten by an infected mosquito. The city conducts weekly tests on mosquitoes captured in 40 traps located across Toronto. There's no word on where in the city this particular mosquito was trapped. Last year, Toronto had 38 positive mosquito tests and 19 confirmed human cases of West Nile virus. Transit goers are in for a real surprise with a real-life superhero swinging around Toronto. It's a promo for the latest Marvel Comics superhero movie. Humber News headed down to Union Station to meet Spider-Man. Annalise Sorti has more on the story. If your spidey senses are tingling, it could be because Spider-Man is hanging out in Canada's busiest pedestrian building. Until 8 p.m., kids and adults can test what kind of upper body strength it takes to be a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man by climbing a six-meter web at Union Station. Uh, yeah, it's a lot harder than it looks. Yeah. For me, I thought. Very, lots of upper body, but it was cool. It was a great opportunity to try this. The event is promoting the latest movie featuring the Marvel comic superhero Spider-Man Homecoming that swings into theaters on Friday, July 7th. What's up, guys? Wait a minute. You guys aren't the real Avengers. I can tell Hulk gives it away. The spider web at Union Station is a big hit with passers-by of all ages. Climbers are guided up the wall by professional stunt instructors. Interestingly, Spider-Man himself was steering clear of the web, preferring to show off his move and take selfies. Did you meet Spider-Man? Yeah. What did he say? He said, do you want to take a picture? We are, we are Spider-Man. Actually, no, we're Spider-Women. <laughs> If you're brave enough, you can try out your spidey skills until 8 p.m. tonight. Analia Sorti, Humber News. We are going to take a quick break. Still ahead, the latest in sports, but first, Michael has a preview of your three-day forecast. It's a hot and muggy one in Toronto today. Some rain could be coming this weekend. Our three-day forecast, after this. <laughs> 